In this video I will be going over a simple technique for modeling which involves creating flat geometry and using deformers. This technique will be shown in practice by creating a simple stylized helmet. For this model I started out by creating a simple plane and by using the Quadra tool which can be found under the modeling toolkit. This tool only works this way if we have an existing flat geometry to start with, which is why I created a simple plane at the start. Next we start by drawing the shape of the different parts of the helmet in the front view. This allows us to create the shapes of the model in a 2D plane. I used this technique and the tools to create the remaining pieces of the helmet. Notice that not all the pieces need to be welded together, but depending on the model, this is something which you can do as well. In this case, I decided to break some of the shapes into different models to make it easier to manage. One thing to keep in mind is to give these flat geometry pieces enough horizontal edge loops. This is so that it makes it a lot easier once we use the formers later on. Once I had all the geometry pieces ready, I freeze transformations and duplicated the entire object to the other side in order to see the proportions a bit better. In this case, I was satisfied with the look, so I deleted the duplicates and proceeded to give the main parts some thickness. At this stage, you want to make sure to give the model the appropriate thickness so it doesn't look too flat once it's deformed. One last thing I did was add a few more edge loops on some parts of the model. Finally, I freeze transformations and mirrored the model. After that, I combined it into one mesh and used the bend deformer found under the deform menu under non-linear. I rotated the main handle and increased the curvature to be 180. This creates a three-dimensional look for our helmet. At this point you want to make sure that this is the look you want for your model. If not, you can undo your changes and adjust the model while it's still flat. In this case I was satisfied with the look. One thing I did was select the back faces, deleted them and made sure to weld the vertices at this location. With the main shape ready, I proceeded to use another deformer, in this case the flare deformer. I moved some of the handles to work with my model and increased the end flare amount for the X and Z axis. I played around with some of the settings until I got the result I was satisfied with. I deleted my history and applied another flare deformer to change the shape a bit more as well. At this point I was happy with the main model. The remaining details, such as the top of the helmet, were created with traditional box modeling techniques. For the interior of the helmet, in this case, I also decided to create a fake dark interior, so I used geometry for that. With the model finalized, it was time to create UVs. In this case, I decided to make the model texture symmetrical, so I deleted half of the model and only did UVs for one half. The UV mapping for this model was very straightforward. I applied cuts where there was a near 90 degree angle change, used the unfold tool and straightened some of the UVs. For some parts I also used cylindrical mapping in order to keep the UVs relatively straight. Keep in mind that for something like this, you could also have done UVs while the model was still flat. In this case I wasn't totally sure how much I would deform the model so I decided to do UVs after that process. Some details for this model will be added through the texturing stage, which is why I made sure to have many of the UV islands be relatively flat. Later on in the texturing process you will see why this is useful. Once I was done with the UVs, I made sure to pack them using as much space as possible in the UV quadrant. The final step was to mirror the parts to the other side. As I did this, I also offset the UVs for the mirrored sections by one in the UV quadrant. I like to do this to avoid potential issues when baking maps in Substance Painter, as sometimes it has trouble baking maps on models that have overlapping UVs. Before exporting the model, I grouped it together and named each part with the suffix underscore low. This is because I will bake my maps in Substance Painter using the Bake by Mesh name setting. For the high poly version of the model, I duplicated the low poly model group and renamed the pieces with the suffix underscore low. For the high poly model, I simply beveled some of the edges of the model. I exported both the low and high poly as FBX files. 
In Substance Painter, I loaded the high poly model under the bake settings, increased the size of the bake maps, and baked my normal maps first in order to see if there were any visible artifacts. In this case, the bake looked fine, so I proceeded to bake the remaining maps. For the material, I used the 3DX stylized smart material. Link to that is in the video description. I changed the main color as well as the color of the edges. I also increased the roughness amount to make it shinier. I used the layer with height information to paint some of the details, in this case using the UV window and drawing straight lines. This step was made easier by the fact that the UVs here were straight. I continued to add details with more height layers as well. The last step was to add some edge damage by using the height layer and painting that manually. Some of this damage could also be done by using smart masks. The final thing I did was make another height layer with a fill layer on it and applied a scratches alpha to that. I painted away some of the scratches to make it look more natural. So this is how you can use the formers to create a bottle like this one and make the whole process a lot easier. Let me know in the comments if you have used this technique before and on what type of objects. Also, if you like this video, I want to invite you to take a look at the channel for more videos like this one.